Hi, I'm Mrs McTaggart and I'm going to take you through the solutions to paper C, paper 1. So this is a non-calculator. So question 1 is basic calculations, it's board mass, so we're going to do the divide sum first. So 7 into 8.4 is 1, remainder 1, so that's 1 1.2. Now, the technique with this one is all about actually doing the sums, because guaranteed, if you try and do this mentally, you'll subtract the 2 from the 4 instead of from the 0. So we're subtracting these, 4 take away nothing is 4, borrow from the 5, that gives us 3.84 for our final answer for that one. Second one, there's two options to go. Um, you could cheat it like a bracket question and do 2 times that, 2 times that, and then add them together. Personally, I've always been told brackets, do the bit in the brackets first of all, rather than multiplying out the brackets. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add together the bits inside. Now to do that, I think I'm going to make it top heavy because I'm going to end up making it top heavy to multiply later on anyway. So if I just do the bit in the brackets, 4 times 1 is 4, add 3 is 7. So I've got 7 quarters plus 3 eighths. Now you might do the smile and the kiss, or you might recognise all you have to do is double that first fraction. So if we want to do the smile and the kiss, that would give you 32 for your denominators, because 4 times 8 is 32. 7 eighths are 56, 4 threes are 12, and that would give you 68 over 32, which I hope you would then simplify down. Um, using the 4 times table would be 17 over 8. Then we have to do the multiplication. So you've got 2 over 7 times 17 over 8. You can cancel the 2 and the 8 if you want, or you could simply do top times top, bottom times bottom. Um, Cancelling the 2 would give you a 1 and a 4, leaving you with 17 over 28. And that will not simplify anymore. And that is your answer, 17 over 20. Question 3 is a straightforward multiply out the brackets and simplify. So times in all of the first bracket by 3, you end up with 6x take away 12. Multiplying the second bracket by negative 4, just watch your signs, gives you negative 12x and negative 4. I think that negative 4 is a place where people will mess up. And then be very careful with your tidying up. 6x take away 12 gives you negative 6x. And then minus 12 minus 4 is minus 16. I've got a lot of pupils who can't do very, very simple integer work like that. Question 4 is a functions question and it's got two parts to it. Part A is a substitution and part B is an equation. So part A, you'll notice x has been replaced with minus 2. So that's what we are doing. We are replacing x with minus 2. So you've got 7 take away 4 times minus 2, which is 7 minus minus there gives you a plus 8, which is 15. So part A is 15. Part B, x has been replaced with a t. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace x with a t. And they've told us that this full thing equals 9. So your function equals 9. So you put your function equal to 9. And from there, you've got a very basic equation. So I'm going to keep the 4t where it is. I'm going to take the 7 over. So you've got 9 take away 7, which is 2, which leaves you with 2 divided by minus 4. Be very careful. That is minus 1 half. Very tempting to write minus 2 for that one. Remember, it is 2 dividing by 4, not 4 divided by 2. So that's the end of that one. Question 5 says solve by factorising. Now, I don't teach how to factorise negative x squared, but I do teach to take everything to the other side. So that would become positive x squared. That would become a negative 6x, and that would become a negative 7. And a negative 7. And you could put the 0 on that side, but it's actually probably nicer to keep it on the side you're used to. So we're just going to put it over there. So all I've done is imagine I've taken everything to the other side, so all the signs have changed. Then I factorise it into two brackets. Numbers multiplied to 7 are 7 and 1. And to make minus 6, it's going to have to be negative 7 plus 1 equals 0. We then break that into two little equations. Because if two things are multiplying to 0, either both things are 0 or one of them is 0. 
solve those two little equations, you get x equals 7 and x equals minus 1. That is us solved by factorising. The fact that it says equal to 0 means once you've factorised, you go on and actually find values of x. Oops. Question 6 is our um, quartiles question. So I'm just going to rewrite these numbers out in order. So writing them out in order, I've got that. Unfortunately, I haven't quite fitted them all in one line. There are 14 numbers there. So I'm going to split that in the middle. Half of 14 is 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there is my middle. That will be my Q2. The middle of the lower half gives me 3, 3 and 1 left in the middle. And the same for the other half. So there are my quartiles. So my Q2 is between 26 and 29. So that will be 27.5. So my Q2 is 27.5. My lower quartile was 13 and my upper quartile was 35. Now this question just asks for the interquartile range. It's quite off, more often than not it asks for the semi-interquartile range. But in interquartile range is really just your Q3 minus Q1. So we are going to do 35 take away 13, which is 22. So my semi-interquartile range is 22. So just a wee reminder before I go on, because I know there's an extra bit to this question, we're talking about a hotel booking taxis. So this was the waiting time for taxis ordered by a company called Quick Cars, and our interquartile range was 22. In another two-week period, we have another company, and it has a median of 27.5 and an interquartile range of Five. Now, if I remember from the last example, my quartile was also 27.5. So both taxi companies have the same median, but one has an interquartile range of five and one has an interquartile range of 22. So fast cabs, their interquartile range is only five minutes compared to quick cabs, which was 22. So that's the real thing with comparison. So it says, use this information to compare the two companies. So I would first comment on the fact that they're both of the same median. So my statement would say both companies have the same median waiting time. But because the second company, Fast Cabs, has a lower semi interquartile range, that means that their waiting times are a lot closer together. It's very like your standard deviation sentence. The lower the quartile range, interquartile range, semi-interquartile range, standard deviation, whatever you're talking about, the lower it is, the closer together the times are. So fast cabs waiting times are less varied. Okay. And you could just spin that the other way if you wanted and said that quick cabs waiting times are more varied. And the reason that is is because that had a lower um interquartile range and I'm just going to write IR for short you would never do that in the exam though okay next question is a sign graph it's a sign graph that has been shifted so I'm just going to remind you of a basic sign graph first of all so a basic sign graph using symmetry has these numbers here 0 180 and 360 so it should cut at 180 but this one cuts at 210 that means our graph has shifted um, 30 in that direction. So it's moved 30 in the positive direction. So if it's moved 30 in the positive direction, that means the opposite number goes in your bracket. So this is sine bracket x minus 30. Okay, and the reason that is is because it should start at zero and what you'll find is that that's actually moved 30 along. And if you solve that bracket x minus 30 equal to zero, it gives you 30 which is the starting point of the graph here. But basically, I just teach it's the opposite. If it's moved in the positive direction, you put a minus in the bracket. Now, the number at the front, which I probably should have done first, um, is your amplitude. Now, this graph goes from 4 to minus 4, so that is a 4 sine graph. Now, in the exam, you can get away with just writing the equation. That's perfectly fine. It asks you to state the values of A and B, so if you wanted to do it that way, we would say that A is 4, and B in this case, now if you look up here, there's a plus in the bracket, but in mine there's a minus. So that means B is not only 30, it's actually minus 30. 
that's why I think it's much safer to just write the actual equation um, because it gets you the full marks. And I think the accident here would be that people would just say that B is 30 because they think it's just the shift. So that's that one. Question eight wants the equation of a line. So, well, actually, ask, yeah, it wants the, the gradient first of all. So gradient between two points is, I'm going to come up here to do it. So I've got my two coordinates, minus one, minus seven, and four negative, uh, sorry, four normal three. So your gradient is y2 minus y1, so 3 minus minus 7 all over 4 minus minus 1, which ends up with both pluses. So you've got 10 over 5, which is 2. So my gradient is 2, so that is part A. Part B says it cuts here at negative 5, so they've given you your C value. So that means your C value is negative 5, so we can go straight to plugging that in. So y equals mx plus c. Your gradient was 2, so it goes in for the m, and your y-intercept was minus 5, so that's part b. Alternatively, you could use the y minus b equals mx minus a1, and pick a coordinate. I'm going to use the one with the 4 and the 3. So you could do y minus 3 equals 2 bracket x minus 4, Multiply all this out, and I'm just going to prove it gives you the same answer. Minus 3 goes over and becomes a plus 3, so you get 2x minus 5. So either method works fine. Personally, if I know the y-intercept, I use the y equals mx plus c1. Now, there's an extra bit to this question that's a little bit trickier. It tells us that the point 3k k lies on this line. Now, in maths, whenever we give you a coordinate we give you an X and a Y, and it's very important to remember that. So what I'm going to do is I am literally going to replace X with 3K and Y with K. So Y becomes K, your X becomes 3K, so I'm going to put a bracket in there, take away 5. Now if I multiply this out, 2 times 3 is 6, so I've got 6K minus 5. I'm going to move the 6K over, so that gives me 1 take away 6 is minus 5. Double negative cancels out, 5 divided by 5 is 1, so k equals 1. So remember, if the only information you've got is a coordinate, it gives you an x and a y to sub in, and that's really common, particularly in quadratics. Okay, question 9 wants you to write it in this trinomial in this form. Anytime you see this, whether it's a's and b's or p's and q's, it means it is completing the square. So I'm going to do this down here. So completing the square... Technique is you do x, carry the sign, so it's x plus, half of the 6 is 3, close your, black, close your bracket and square it. So there's the first wee bit. Now whatever that number is in there, you square it and subtract it. So squaring 3 gives you 9, so we subtract 9. And that's to counteract the plus 9 you would get if you were to multiply out x plus 3, x plus 3. That's what that's for. That's why we write the minus 9 on there, okay? So that's really not getting to do with it just now. So we've got minus 9, and then you bring down the minus 7 as well. Tidy that up. And when you tidy up, you get x plus 3, all squared, minus 16. Please don't mess up at that little bit there. You're tidying up. So there is part A. That's it written in that form. Now, the coordinates of the turning point, so the general form of this is that. And your turning point is always whatever B, C is. So your turning point is, now it says plus 3 in my bracket. It's always the opposite of what you want there, okay? So plus 3 means it's gone negative, and it's gone to the negative direction. So it's moved 3 left. So that's minus 3. And your C value is just what's on the end, so minus 16. So your turning point is minus 3, minus 16, the opposite of what's in the brackets. So remember, the shifting of the sign graphs, the shifting of the quadratics. If it says a plus, it means it's gone in the minus direction. If it says a minus, it means it's gone in the positive direction when it's moved. Okay, so this question should hopefully jump out you straight away. It's simultaneous equations. We need to shorten down these two scenarios. So we've got three nights plus two breakfasts is 145. Then we have five nights and three breakfasts, cost 240. So there's my two equations. We have to go work out the cost of breakfasts. So I don't know, different teachers teach us differently. I always teach to get the middle to the same one a plus, one a minus. 
So I'm going to multiply the first equation all through by 3 and the second one all by minus 2. Make sure you multiply everything very carefully. So that gives us 9, a 6, and 3 times 1, 4, 5. Do you know what? You don't want to chance it and get it wrong. So go to the side and do a sum. That is 435. Double everything gives you minus 10, minus 6, minus 480. And now we just add these two rows together. So 9 take away 10 is minus n. Your b's will cancel out and that gives you negative 45. So the cost of a night is 45. So it's 45 pounds for a night in the hotel. Once we use that, you're going to sub it back into one of your equations. Um, I think I'll probably use the top one. So I've got 3 times 45 plus 2 breakfasts is 145. 3 times 45 is 135 plus two breakfasts is 145. Hopefully you should spot that 2b is 10 by taking that over. So 2b is 10, b is 5. Now I'm not finished. Any simultaneous equation question, you should say at the end that it's 45 pounds per night. And I know it doesn't ask for that, but it usually does. So it's 45 pounds per night and it's five pounds per breakfast. And that one only wanted breakfast, but you must finish in words, okay? If it's a given to you in words, write it in words. So if I'd left my answer as B equals five, I wouldn't have got the full marks there. Okay, a little bit of thirds and indices here for the first two. So eight to the power of two thirds. This is going to have to take in the fact that you remember this rule here. If you have a fractional power, that can be written like this. And the rule I teach is the bottom number becomes the root, the top stays put. So in this case, the bottom number is a 3, so it's going to be the cube root of 8 squared. Now, you can either do the cube root of 8, then square it, or the square root of, um, or sorry, then 8 squared, and then cube root it. Personally, I think it's easier to do cube root of 8 is 2, and then 2 squared is 4. Alternatively, as I said, that could have been the cube root of 64, which is 4, and that's all it is for the first one. Indices is all about remembering the rules. Part B says to simplify. Now, it doesn't mention about leaving it as a certain simplest form. And there's so many ways to do this one. You could just look at this and then think of this. Oh, well, that's the same as root 24 over 2, which is root 12. And then root 12 can become root 4, root 3, leaving you with an answer of 2 root 3. That's one way, right? Another way might be that you just want to simplify the top number. Numbers that go into 24 are root 4 and root 6, leaving that you with a root 2 in the bottom. That gives you 2 root 6 all over 2. And you might think, um, sorry, all over root 2, and you might think, well, I can't do any more with that. But actually, although we tell you never to simplify root 6, it can be written as root... Sorry, it can be written as root 3, root 2, all over root 2. And then your root 2s will cancel, leaving you with 2 root 3 again. You could also do it by rationalising. That would give you, if I do a third way in another colour, rationalising would be times the top and bottom by root 2. So root 24 times root 2 would give you root 48 in the bottom, all over 2. Root 48 is root 16, root 3, all over 2, which gives you 4 root 3, all over 2 which is 2 root 3. So the problem with that one is there's so many different ways to go. Right, luckily, part C is a nicer one to go do. So um, I'll just change my colour pen here. Let's change it to something I've not used. Let's go with a darker blue. Right, so the bottom question is simplify. So it looks like the bottom's already been factorised. Um, I'm going to factorise the top. There's a common factor of 2 in the top, leaving me with x plus 1. On the bottom, remember that squared bracket is basically you have an x plus 1, x plus 1 written over twice. Cancel them down so you're left with 2 over x plus 1 with or without those brackets there. All right. And that brings us to the end of that paper. Thank you very much. I hope that has helped.